Welcome to the Watermark Photography Podcast, an international offering of Simarca de Agua, a podcast for professionals and enthusiasts to connect and share their stories. I'm Jessica Duque, food photographer and your host. This podcast is brought to you by Sigma, sigmabenelux.com. Soho, Brand Studio. whitebackdrops.com Since he was a little boy, Jeffrey has had a passion for nature. His fascination and unstoppable curiosity about wildlife make him realize that this is what he wanted to do. Becoming a nature filmmaker combined with his major degree as an ecologist from the University of Wageningen in the Netherlands. His love for nature and images come together in his work as a nature filmmaker. During his studies, he did an internship at the Film Wild, and since then, he has been working as a camera assistant at different major productions in the Netherlands and abroad. Jeffrey describes himself as a wildlife filmmaker and photographer. Honoring those titles, Jeffrey worked as a camera assistant on The Silence of the Tides. This is a cinematic portrait for international cinema about the UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Wedding of the Sea, one of the largest wetlands tidal and coastal systems in the world. This movie was directed by Peter Rin de Kron. This is No Watermark Photography Podcast, Jeffrey Van Houten. Hi, so we have here our guest, a super guest. His, uh, his name is Jeffrey Van Houten. I had the pleasure to work with him last year, uh, thanks to a project uh, with Sigma Benelux. He is the filmmaker behind uh, of, of a beautiful project about uh, women in photography, especially Sigma ambassadors. Welcome, Jeffrey Van Houten. How are you? Yeah, thank you so much for welcoming me in your, uh, in your podcast. It's a, it's a pleasure. I'm fine. And how are you? It's yeah, I'm great. I'm great. Yeah. I'm happy to see you again. Uh, we had the pleasure, as I mentioned, of working together for a special project. And uh, I, I was so uh, captivated by the way you do things that is like, oh, my God, I cannot believe this guy is so down to earth and so kind and so professional. And the quality of your work is amazing. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's nice to hear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and that's also the reason why we would love to make a short video about you because we love your work as well. No, your thank you. Are great too. And even I think the, the, the uh, collaboration between each yes. other uh, worked. The energy yes. was good. And we have some, it was two days of shooting. Yes. And the, these two days were perfect. So we, had, we are not in a rush. We had a time to make our shots. Yes, and I think there, there's the there you make the quality stuff. Yeah, it, for me it was like a, a different situation, like uh, resuming my whole uh, life or photography life uh, in two days, like squeezing every detail as much as possible to be like captured by you guys, uh, you and and and, and Norchet, your assistant, that they yeah. you did an amazing job. And, and yeah, I like I like in your video, I liked how you pick up the, the little details. Yeah. And it was about some basil on, on a pasta. Yes. And that's so green against red. It was so visible. It was, it was very attractive to watch. Thank and that's where, where we get inspired to, to be patient and make the right shots. In the intro, I said a few things about your career, how you started like a filmmaker and working specifically for the wildlife. So, but in your own words, can you describe yourself a little bit? Okay, who are you and what do you do? Yeah, uh, well, like I mentioned, I'm Jeffrey. I'm uh, right now. I'm 26 years old, living yes. in Arnhem, the Netherlands. Yes. And I'm working as a wildlife filmmaker in the Netherlands, working on several projects for cinema mm -hmm. and even documentaries for the television. And yeah, nature is a big part of my life. So I I have an education in ecology. So I studied in Wageningen University, and I've studied forest and nature conservation. Yes. And before that, I started as a nature photographer. So everything since I was 12 years old was in terms of nature and capture nature in, in, in images. And 
I'm now 14 years later since my yes. 12 and I'm still doing it. And that's that's a big part of my of my world. Yeah. Well, let me remind everyone, uh, your social platform is uh, on Instagram. We have uh, his name user is Jeffrey.vanhouten. And I'm going to leave it all right here on the description box there, where you can find him, also his uh, website and all these projects that he has been working on. So we can uh, browse your Instagram and see what do you do, what, are, what you have done in the past. And the photography is simply amazing. I cannot complain. And I'm so in love every time I, I check your feed and what you're doing. And I know you are a busy guy, but please... Uh, check his Instagram is unbelievable yeah okay. thank you so much. and even when they when they want to leave a comment and what they they think about it I will I, I, I will, it would be a pleasure to read it all right uh how did everything start I mean uh, when did you think that wildlife photography was your real passion and the thing that you really wanted to do you said that you have a, a an education and a master and a diploma about the ecologist and this and that, but how did everything start? Did you start with the photography or did you start with the, with the video right away? Yeah, now, well, I started, I started with, um, with something else because mm -hmm. I was quite a young child. I think yeah. I was five years old. Oh, wow. Uh, that, was, that was a moment. Well, we all live in a world and we all live in, with the kind of things that we learn from our parents. But this yes. time I found a small book about birds uh in in the in the room of my of my parents so yeah when i found it i was reading it mm -hmm. and a new world for me because in in the world i lived i saw some birds flying and i was yes. a little bit interested in nature yes but when i saw this book i read about it and i learned a lot about birds mm -hmm. and i saw new species and suddenly when i learned about it i read about it when I was six, seven, eight, I, I learned and learned and I learned. And suddenly I saw the rare species. I saw mm -hmm. birds I've never seen before. Yes. And suddenly everything came together and I thought, oh, I can now see these 50 species, but I want wow. more, I want to see more, I want to learn more. And sometimes you have three people in your life that can be important. Yes. And one of my, of my, people in, in my life were very very important was on my yeah, yeah preschool mm -hmm. there was a there was an uh, a teacher and he was watching birds as well yes and that was a match and he learned me so much he was around 60 years old almost to retire mm -hmm. and every time when I left uh, when the school was over I stayed there for a little bit and hearing his stories that what, what he witnessed in nature and what he told me about nature and always he was painting very re realistic idealistic paintings uh -huh. and he showed me everything and we stayed in contact after preschool as well so when I went to high school sometimes I went back to him and we talked about uh, birds as well and there we, there we go further uh, because I bought a binocular no that's a, a telescope not oh, a wow. I, I bought a telescope and I was 30 years old so that was that was for for me uh, a way to watch bird very close by to watch how they move what the colors are what the characteristics they had so I saw mayor more and more and more birds with animals as well so yes. red deers or wild boars and I loved it all but I saw so such great things. It was a bullfinch was next to me in 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 snow. That was amazing. So red, red, white, black colored yes. fish, amazing. So I went to my parents and I asked for their camera because they had an, a, an, a digital camera with uh -huh. with two megapixel and yes. a very big telephoto zoom lens on that. Wow. I tried to make some close-ups because I saw so such a great things so i have to capture it and show other people how amazing these birds are yes. and that's where it all started and so i was uh, 13 I was, it was my birthday and i bought a uh, diesel r with uh, a telephoto lens yes i worked hard for it because i brought all the newspapers around <laughs> to, uh, my, my my first real camera uh -huh. and then there and then it's also yeah that, that was the beginning of all the photography I did so the next 
I think the next five years, mm -hmm. I went to nature all the time. And yes. I, had an, I had my own place in the forest. And they, they're, they're the, the owners of that place, they, um, they give me the key of the, of the area so I can go in and nobody yes. else could come in. So it was my own outside world in the middle of the forest in the Netherlands where nice. I learned how to photography, how to uh, take photographs of the mm -hmm. animals. And I met red squirrels. Yes. And it was an amazing time. So I, it was my playground. I can yes. do anything like what, what I want to do. And everything started with you with curiosities, like observing things. And, and I think that's the beginning for all the photographers, like curiosity, exploring all those little details. And, and you, in the end, you fell in love with them, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I can. Uh, that's totally what I, what I, what I experienced as well. Yes. Yeah, it's a, it's a method to, to capture things that you show, want to show others because you were, it was your curiosity and you discovered things and yes. then you captured suddenly. So it's a great way. And even with the modern uh, technologies, yes. it's to capture your beautiful moments is easier. As it's, it, it hasn't been easier before yeah. as right now. And I, I share that with you because uh, I used to make photos. Yeah, of course. When you study graphic design, uh, you have this subject is photography like for two semesters or something. And then you learn how to develop those photos in the labs, you know, like old, old school and taking pictures with analogic cameras. And then uh, this digital era that can, comes with the cell phone and, you know, smartphones that you just forget about cameras. You start taking pictures with these devices and you forget about the beauty of things. And when I retake again, and I, and I fell into this path of uh, being a food photographer, when I took the camera and I started exploring all those details, like it's like mind blowing all the details that you can catch with a yeah. camera and with a lens, like, oh my God. And I know that passion that you feel of sharing that with the world is like, oh my God, it's like what you see and what I see. And I, yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And I think you're right because there's one big difference with your cell phone yes. and with your camera because you can change the the, the lenses. Yes. It. And so that's how you create other boundaries within your field of view. Yes. That's what I like about your, your work as well. Because when I watched you, you when I was watching you taking yes. photos of the pasta, he was he was just taking care of all the things in the frame with a yes. spe specific macro lens mm -hmm. and even you was you, you take some time yes. to watch the image and to create a, a right composition yeah and sometimes i be i i think with cell phone it's sometimes it's you are too too much in a hurry and it's a one mm -hmm. one wide angle lens most of yes. the time and that that's a big big thing with what we do we can maybe take some um, rest and change our boundaries with the lenses we use yes. and then create a great composition to show others yes exactly and about wildlife tell me about the challenges how how is it how is the experience of uh okay one day you grab your camera and you go into the you know into the woods or i don't know what your favorite place is uh, at the moment yeah. But how is the experience of capturing those animals? Like, how fast can you be? And what, how is everything? Yeah, it's uh, with, with taking shots of wildlife, it's mm -hmm. all about being on the right place on the right time. Yes. And then you have to get some knowledge. And well, I have some knowledge from my background at Wagner University, but yes. I'm not, I'm not, I know, I didn't know anything at all. So, I would, I would, I love to work with uh, scientists or yes. other people that know a lot about the specific story of an animal. Mm -hmm. They can, they can make you feel you know the animal sometimes. Yes. So you can predict it, how yes. it, how it changes their behavior, and how you can create an environment where they don't, uh, when they don't know you are there. And that's okay. a that's a big big thing. So I always always want to disappear. <laughs> Have you ever been in camouflage uh, clothes to to do those kind of shots? 
yeah yeah well most of the time i want to hide myself okay. but sometimes i can hide myself in the field without any uh without any any camouflage Perfect. so yes there there but the challenge is to be on the right place on the right time mm -hmm. with the right circumstances because you want to get the nice weather the great temperatures yes. the different the the most rare moments you want to capture it yes now, you have to work with a lot of people and mm -hmm. with a lot of knowledge yes. and even experiences improve your work as well yeah so you, have that, right. you have you to have go that you have that you have that in in how do you say uh, as an advantage because of your studies so that is one of the things that you you can predict and also because of your experience working with others makes it makes the work easier yeah yeah that's true and uh, and even yeah what i what, what i want what i would like to add mm -hmm. is that it's, you have to go outside in the first place because otherwise you won't experience at all yes and um sometimes you don't know what to do because the weather is cloudy and yes. the light isn't good enough but when you go outside it can inspire you you can get an um mm -hmm. an, an, an encounter with with something that you love so much and you have never thought you will encounter it yes because we spent about two days together i learned a lot about you guys uh, you and your girlfriend norcia that is your camera assistant um i know you both are vegetarian and we learn a couple of things about each other but i would like to ask you how do you cope with those projects that sometimes compromise your conviction as an animal advocate and let's talk about specifically this instagram post and this photo so it's about a goose series that won the prize of a green camera can you describe a little bit what's happening there because There are some animal defenders like commenting on the post. How do you deal with these kind of situations? Yeah, well, in my opinion, the the geese series that was a, that was part of an, a project for National Geographic in the Netherlands, and yes. we decided to make a story about um, about the geese because it's kind of a mirror how we deal mm -hmm. with nature in general. Yes. Because that we have grasslands anywhere. Mm -hmm. And yes. more than 70% in the Netherlands are grasslands with protein grasslands. Yes. And these green areas, there are not that much biodiversity in it. Mm -hmm. There are so many different species and, and many insects as well, or other, uh, other uh, uh, animals in it. Yes. Like the weather birds, well, they, they just decrease in numbers very quickly because we yes. intensify the grasslands yes. because we have a big livestock in the Netherlands mm -hmm. and we have to feed them all yes. and we feed them with the with grass with the most the, the, with a lot of protein in it mm -hmm. we have to we, so we 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 have that problem that by their biodiversity is decreasing but other animals like mm -hmm. geese are uh, they they profit from it okay. so they they have so it's such an big meal for them they they love the grasslands with a lot of protein in the Netherlands so they eat the grasslands yes but then when they eat the grasslands in the winter because we have three to four million geese in mm -hmm. the winter in the Netherlands and that's wow. the most that's that's a lot of lot of geese yes and it's in 1980 they were rare in the Netherlands yes that's just 40 years ago but now mm -hmm. with better grasslands with better protein grasslands they, yes. they increase in numbers very quickly okay and i decided to make a story about it because we have everywhere green mm -hmm. places uh green green grasslands with yes. not that much in it mm -hmm. and suddenly when the geese come in mm -hmm. see it as a big big problem because they eat for for 10 to 12 million wow euros Uh, of harm that's yeah. what they eat in the Netherlands that's a big amount of money and yeah. then everybody is dealing with it in their yeah. way so yes. some, some the government can um, give you a little bit of money when they when they harm the grasslands yes. when, when they, you can harvest harvest that, that much for your livestock yes so they compensate it like like that mm -hmm. but then you have first of all you have to scare them yeah then if that doesn't help you have to shoot them yeah. and after that when you do all these things 
and you try to shoot them and try to scare them, mm-hmm. then you get your money. And otherwise, you won't get your money in anyway. Okay. So, so these guys is like acting basically like a scarecrow with a yeah. gun. That's yeah. it. Just to scare yeah. them. To, to scare them and to shoot them as well. Because okay. otherwise they won't get money. So okay. they're forced by the government to do this. So it's like a plague, basically, right? What are you describing? Yeah. But okay. the plague... It's like a it's like a plague that we uh, created. Mm-hmm. Because we want to get all the livestock. We want yes. to get all the meat. We yes. want to get all the the milk and the cheese from yes. the livestock in the Netherlands. Yes, and that's why we have such a big amount of green grasslands. Yes, the geese are uh, like it very much. So we have mm-hmm. a lot of geese, and that's mm-hmm. a, that's suddenly a problem. Yeah, so it's like a mirror of ourselves that we have such a big amount of geese in the Netherlands. Yeah. Then we have to cope with it. And what about this picture? Uh, how did you, I don't know, how did you manage that moment? Yeah. Because I know you are not a meat lover at all and you respect uh, animal life. And how did you, you know, put yourself together and, and make these kind of pictures? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there, the, the problem is we have too, too much geese. Mm-hmm and they shoot them okay. well we shoot 100,000 geese a year in the oh, Netherlands right. 100,000 okay. okay but the problem is people in the Netherlands don't know that 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 it's a product as well mm-hmm. there's so there are a lot of geese that just go in the trash okay and when I'm, I don't eat meat anyway but it's just a shame that we mm-hmm. put all the geese after we shoot them we put mm-hmm. them in the trash oh wow so i want to show a restaurant where mm-hmm. a chef can make a uh, can make something out of it okay and use it for maybe uh, uh, because otherwise it's just rubbish yeah exactly and that's what i want to show with this image that yes. that, that it's just it's it's just more sustainable than we get some pork in a supermarket yes and that's just a few that's just an, an opinion that i want to show with this image this photo basically addresses the storytelling of the first of the scarecrow guy with the with the gun so you it's a good way to tell a story and to explain okay, what is this all about it's not like okay at first you see that photo and you start judging like oh my god this is violence and then you, you explain us like okay he basically start like trying to scare them to go away yeah okay and sometimes it doesn't work and you have to unfortunately shoot them and what do you do with those uh goose or geese okay you have to do something about it because most of the time like you said they you know they end up in the trash but maybe we can do something about it as well and that is the next photo of the of the chef like trying to do a creation in and it's wonderful. I mean, we just need to work on tolerance and try and, yeah. and not judge the book by the cover. Just like, okay, read and, and try to, you know, go deep into the details and, and what's this, the real situation in here. Yeah, of, exactly. And we, we have to realize how we can, how our behavior influence such things. Okay. And one of the most exciting projects you have been part of is the silence of the tides how did you get involved in this project yeah wow uh, silence of the tides is the most amazing project I w- i've worked on yeah and i was their camera assistant first mm-hmm. camera assistant and i was their uh, second wildlife unit so i made yes. some wildlife shots for it yes and i get involved because i worked uh in, for cinema document wildlife documentaries before yes. with cameraman dick harwein and he's the DOP of Silent of the Tides, and he took yes. him. Uh, he took me with him in this project, and it was just a project that that was so nice because it was the water sea. I love yes. the water sea. Yes, with a lot of challenges, with a lot of knowledge about nature, with about uh, with wind, with um, water, with salt water. Yes, with hard circumstances, with a lot of boats. It was just amazing. And the director, Peter in the Kroon, yeah. he has just a strong vision about his film. Yes. Uh, because he saw the water sea as a breathing organism. Yes. The water comes in, the water comes out. Yes. 
and that's that that's the tidal system of the water sea and you see it with everything the mm -hmm. people that that come in in summer to enjoy yes. the water sea they come in every year and they go out every year yes and even the when the water goes out the birds are spread all over the water sea to eat when the water comes in they just go away on high water places where they can can manage and uh, where they can survive and then they go back and eat again and all these all these things are are about process yeah. process things but besides that we all want something about the water sea and sometimes we just practice with fighting um, um, airplanes mm -hmm. to practice there and that is in big contrast with the birds are just eating one specific worm or something yeah. and that big contrast that's about this film and it's observing so no voice over no music it's just about you in the cinema watching what is happening at the water sea one wow. of the most the biggest tidal systems in the world yes and 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 how long uh did you work for that project how, how was the uh... I mean, when you start shooting and uh, the hours, working hours, tell me about it, because uh, I think you have a lot of footage of uh, of all your shootings, right? You you want to be at the best place on the right mo moment on, yeah. on the places. So with sunrise, with sunset, during the night when it's beautiful, with, yeah. with stars, uh, or, or maybe sometimes in the middle of the day, and sometimes we have to combine it in one week. Yeah. So yeah, the working hours, I don't count them. We have just But how many weeks did you work for this project? I mean, 15 months. Months, yes. 15 months shooting. During the week, we spend a lot of time at the water sea and just think about what we have, what what we have to shoot. Wow. So we follow out some people. We follow out the birds. We follow out the the animals. We follow yes. big contrast like the F the F 16s that's just practicing on the, on the flea horse at the flea land. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was. It was amazing it was amazing time so the it was a lot of things mm -hmm. different things so every week was different and sometimes we have to wait hours or, or days for a specific shot and sometimes we and most of, most of the time yes we went to places and we just make two shots that was the day but wow. those shots have to be perfect but for me it was it was a place where i can learn about composition about fishing about how you can Film 15 months. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's a lot. And, and um, it is a satisfaction in the end because also you, you work for a director and, and yeah. yes. Well, sometimes it's difficult because uh, you don't you don't see it or you don't mm -hmm. see what you expected. But this mm -hmm. time was different. Yes. We filmed beautiful things, in my opinion. I saw yes. shots from the DOP, Dick Harawain, that I was blown away. Yeah. But when I was in the cinema the first time and I saw mm -hmm. the concept of the director, yes. I was blown away as well. It was, it was, it came together. Yes. And I was thinking, how on earth is this possible that we filmed on more than 100 locations? Mm -hmm. Put it together and you watch a great film from a uh, from, from beginning to, to the end. I saw the trailer and it yeah. was amazing. And I'm so proud of you that you were yeah. part of that project. And when I saw your stories like on red carpet or different yeah. awards, I was like, oh, I know him. <laughs> he's, my, yeah. Yeah. he's my favorite filmmaker. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, we, we have won already some awards. How, yeah. how great is that? That is so cool. That's amazing. I, okay, what about three recommendations of uh, equipment, the necessary equipment you need if you want to start like shooting and making photos or video for wildlife, for those uh, beginners or amateurs or experts? What do you use? Well, it, I think um, it's more important to be on the right place in the right time. Yes. To focus on where you at, at, well, at which moment. Yes. And then you have to get a, a camera uh, that should that uh, basically I can be very con concrete. You have to mm -hmm. shoot. A, you have to get a camera that should raw. Yes. Have a tele lens, telephoto mm -hmm. lens. Yes, telephoto lens. What What's your favorite? Like the your I go love, to? I love the six sixty six hundred for filmmaking, mm -hmm. and for photography, I would suggest the one hundred to four hundred or the one hundred fifty six hundred. Yes. 
and you have a preference of brands or something yeah i i prefer i prefer the sigma brand because it's high quality yes this and it's affordable as well yes. and it's a great build so they made something for the customer and you can you can feel it so i i, I prefer the 150 to 600 yes and when you walk around you can choose the contemporary and when you're more professional you use the sports okay and uh, and the camera what's your the camera, camera at the moment well at the moment i used uh, sony a7 IV. there are not many people that have it but i have them finally since yes the, uh, the sony a7 mark IV. and before that i used the canon eos 5d mark IV, uh -huh. or the an eos 60d yes. uh, and the canon eos 6d uh -huh. and the last two are very affordable so 300 euros you have one mm -hmm. and uh, in terms of lenses for one for a thousand euros you have a big great telephoto lens yes and i prefer a macro and a wide angle standard zoom lens so a 17 6 70 mm -hmm. from Sigma and a 105 105 macro yes. from Sigma. and then you have all you get yeah everything you need Okay, but basically what you're telling me is uh, being a wildlife photographer or videographer is an expensive uh, job or yeah, niche of the photography, right? Because all those lenses, although you said they were affordable, in the end, they, they add up and, and because you want to make high resolution and good quality images, you have to make an investment. So it yeah. is not cheap. Yeah. It is not cheap. No, because you have, you have a tripod, you need a tripod. Mm -hmm. you, uh, that's that's expensive as well. Okay. So with all the accessories, you need two thousand euros to have a to have a professional equipment. Exactly. But but it's it could be cheaper. But this is This is uh, um, professional level. Yeah, this is exactly. the first professional level. And yeah. and for those who are just like okay, Jeffrey, you know what? I love uh, photographing birds. Uh, can you recommend me which camera and which lens? can I get because I got these questions like frequently for food photography and then oh, I yeah. say things like okay look the best camera doesn't exist it's just a camera you can afford and you feel comfortable using this is my advice number one because for me maybe the r6 works perfectly but for others like mm, I need the yeah. r5 I need more resolution so for me this is the the one that I can afford and the the, the one that I can use and know how to use and the one that I feel comfortable with but for those beginners, which camera will be like ideal? And I normally recommend, okay, think about your investment in equipment, like do something smart that in the end can last for at least three years that you can use for at least three years until you step up and get a bigger one or a better one. But for beginners, which lens for photographing birds? You said a telephoto. Then maybe the Sigma 100 to 400. Yes. That's a portable one with a Sony A6400. Yeah. And that will be like a total of... Um, 900. 900 euros in total. Yeah. And to you can, start. To start. And you can, you can uh, take photos directly because it's great out of the hand. So you don't need a tripod especially. Okay. That's perfect. Great advice from Jeffrey yeah <laughs> okay to know you or to get to know you a little bit more because uh one of the things that i love about you your life and and, and you and norcia is like you have your house but additionally to this you have a house on wheels a house on wheels that uh is on instagram and i'm gonna leave also that information here you can follow their journey and how they made it and this is like a cool thing to do so you work remotely and for all your projects because it's basically a filmmaker and also your nature and wildlife projects you move on your, on your house on wheels and yeah. you can be anywhere and that's awesome tell me yeah. how, how, when did it start it's a dream of of both of us we yeah. dreamed about being more more like free yeah. get some freedom and we well we were talking about it for months yeah. maybe for years already yes and then covid started yes and that was that was for me it was an okay time i have i don't uh, i don't uh, complain because i had still work i was healthy i had no nobody else in my environment that gets sick or something for me it was a time that we could spend some time with nurture to yeah. build 
a camper van. Yeah. And that was a dream because I was working in Belgium and we couldn't get a hotel. We couldn't use Airbnb because of COVID. Yeah. So we were traveling all the time from the Netherlands to Belgium, yeah. to the Netherlands, to Belgium. Yeah. And it, I get tired of it. Yeah. So I get some inspiration to buy a van. And we decided maybe we can realize our dreams. So we get we get some we get the finances together. Yes. We found out it could be a possibility that we can make our own fan, but that's so much work. How are we going to do that? How are we going to get all the knowledge to build a fan? Yes. And we go on Google, on YouTube, and we found other people that already did it. Yes. And share their experiences. It was awesome. That's, that's where we get so excited about it. And we just fuck it, we do it. And then we (laughs) realized one dream and we realized a little bit of freedom. And we learned everything from other other people. And it was such a great pleasure. It was almost even, even it was almost as nice as going out with the bus, uh, with the fan in in Sweden or Norway. Yes, I've seen a lot of uh, of your pictures. Yeah, we and you're sleeping in the nature, right in the nature. So that yeah. that is. And that even is... for I use it for work all the time. To yeah. uh, there are a lot of we have a lot of electricity in it, so I yeah. can power my batteries. I can power mm-hmm. the lights. Yes, I yes. can create coffee when I am working in the night. Yes. Uh, and even together, we we worked a lot to uh, from the from the van during uh, shooting days. Mm-hmm. We can uh, we can create some food out of it. So. We have so <laughs> great things, and uh, it gives them a little. Uh, it gives a lot of freedom. Yeah, amazing. I I love the this kind of lifestyle, and I I'm sure if you have kids, you will uh, you will Get bring it. them too because you also bring your cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Our cat is always with us. And to close this conversation with Jeffrey, I would like to ask you: Do you have any upcoming projects that you would like to share with us? Like, or are they top secret? No, well, actually, I'm doing three great projects, and they are okay. not good at all. I'm doing about uh, I'm cooperating with a, a film and a, a cinema film. Oh. So the film is about the black tailed godwit and yes. how you have to keep him in the Netherlands because we oh. it's our national bird. So oh, wow! We have to keep it. We have to take care of it, and okay. the farmer is jealous a lot with it because okay. he is fighting against the system that have to earn a lot of money. Yes. But he wants to keep the meadow bird, and yes. then he earn not enough money. So he's always in in a challenge, and that's what the film is about. And I do the nature shots. Yeah. And besides that, I would do something about the European bison. Yeah, you hear you hear it well because in the Netherlands we have a wild European bison herd. Okay. And not a lot of people know it, but it's a challenge to get to get them in a specific nature area yes you have to keep it alive you can yes. you have to keep it healthy yes. and i'm making an informative film for inside this world this professional world that mm-hmm. um, handling european bisons and what you have to take care of Amazing. and as last i'm working about the nature television project for the caro the mpo and i'm doing the nature <laughs> as well and uh, it's it's it will be within a year on the television amazing amazing news and also aside other projects from uh, individual clients because i know i'm one yeah. of them i hope yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah and i'm doing for sigma things as well so yeah. i'm still doing it yeah you you have a, a strong commitment with them this uh, an excellent brand uh, here in benelux and yeah. all over the world but especially for us that we work for them or with them uh, i can i cannot be more grateful uh to you know to this brand and also the opportunity to meet you and yeah. meet, uh, norche and working together and that's the sigma family in exactly. the exactly in, in the netherlands yeah in the netherlands. well benelux yes benelux. okay yeah. well thank you for you know giving me a few minutes of your time because i know you are super busy and uh this is a you know, this is a project that I wanted to to do as well in English. The 
the take on of the Spanish podcast uh, Sin Marca de Agua. So this is Nowhere Mark Photography Podcast. And I would like to thank you for the opportunity yeah. to have you here. And I know uh, I'm going to have you later and showing more of your projects. And uh, I'm always like, you know, following you and liking everything you do. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. It was a great great um to to speak with you yes and besides I'm, i'm very proud that you keep your dreams alive and that you make make it real and you make it work so keep yeah. up <laughs> this, even your spanish one is very good and i hope this one will be a success as well thank you so much i'm doing this with all the love and uh, you know because I'm a food photographer, but I'm always curious about other uh, photography niche. And I want to share with all the people how others are making it and how they were, uh, how are their struggles, how they cope with all the situation, how they thrive in the end. So this is the intention, the real intention of this, this podcast, to bring all the motivation necessary to help you to continue with your photography journey, no matter which one it is. Thank you so much, Jeffrey van Houten from the Netherlands. Thank you, Bel, and uh, tot volgende keer in Dutch. Yeah, thank Until you. Until next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.